I truly believe that working remotely is the best way to take control of your time, but it can be a bit of a minefield. So if you are brand new to remote work, or even if you've been at it for a while, you are in the right place. Welcome to Better with Phoebe. I'm Phoebe and I help people build lives they love by taking charge of their thoughts and their time. I've been working remotely since 2014. And in this video, I'm going to talk about the 10 most important tips I've learned that will help you work from home successfully and productively. Doing all 10 of them at once was probably gonna be too much for most people. I recommend doing them in the order that I've laid out for maximum impact and minimal feelings of being overwhelmed. Let's jump into it. Tip number one, talk to your housemates about expectations. Doesn't matter what your living situation is, if it involves other people, you should probably have a conversation with them about what reasonable expectations are. A lot of times if you live with people who don't have experience working remotely, they might make the mistake of expecting you to be available during work hours the way you are during the evenings and the weekends. And you're just not. During that time, it's work hours. So work is your number one priority the same way it would be if you were working in an office. Now, if you don't have this sort of conversation, you will probably end up in a situation where someone that you live with asks you to do something or demands of your time in a way that you aren't able to fulfill. And that can create conflict. And that conflict is avoidable by going up front and having a conversation about expectations. Tip number two, create a comfortable, dedicated workspace that you can use as a home base. Now, a lot of first time remote workers are surprised to find that their home life and their work life kind of meld together. But the reason that happens is pretty obvious. These activities are happening in the same space. So the way to mitigate that is also obvious. Try to create some dedicated space where you do your work. Now, a home office is the pinnacle. If you can have a home office, amazing. But a lot of people don't have that luxury. So if you aren't able to have a home Home office, see if you can find a desk, even if it's a small desk that'll fit in your bedroom where you can primarily set up as your workspace. But sometimes even that isn't possible. Shout out to my New Yorkers. I remember that life when my apartment was just too small for a real desk and I had to sort of bounce around my apartment in different places to work. With that, I had a little messenger bag that had all of my work supplies in it. So I had journals and folders with my papers in it and pencils and that was sort of my physical through line that if I had that bag with me, I was in my workspace. And it helped create that mental separation between work and home. Don't just stop at investing in the ergonomics, also consider investing in the aesthetics of your dedicated workspace. Think about color, texture, plants, art, all of these things can make the experience of working in your workspace far more pleasant. Tip number three, proactively identify and mitigate any distractions you encountered during the day. When you're working from home, you are surrounded by all of the activities you normally do during your free time. And when you're not in an office, you don't have coworkers around you to provide that additional accountability to stay focused and on task. So you have to take up the slack and make sure that you're being mindful and present and paying attention to how those distractions are affecting your performance during the day. Is having the television on really helping your productivity? Are you checking your phone more than you normally would? How many trips to the refrigerator have you made in the last two hours? All of these sorts of distractions can keep you from doing your best, most productive work when you're working remotely. So pay attention, be humble and honest, and find ways to reduce how those distractions are affecting you. Find an organization system that works for you in your personal life and in your work life. It's really important to make sure that both aspects of your life are as organized as possible, because if one is disorganized, the other one is going to feel disorganized as well. One of the biggest distractions that I encounter as a remote worker is all of the other things that I have to do. But having a really strong organization system allows me to take those thoughts of, oh, I need to do that and put it into my organization system so that it happens at the right time, not just because I thought of it. Now, I don't want to say that your organization system has to work for both places. It's okay if you have one organization system that is for your work life and one organization system for your personal life. It's even better if you have one that works for both, but you don't have to. Not everyone's situation is gonna be conducive to that. The important thing is that both areas are organized so you don't experience distraction, feelings of overwhelm, or anything else that brings down your productivity as a result of having too many things to do and not knowing where they fit in your life. Tip number five, have a solid morning and evening routine. It is a classic 
work from home newbie move to roll out of bed a couple of minutes before you're supposed to be awake and aware and present for work. That is a terrible idea, like a literal recipe for disaster. Do not do that. Now, I'm not saying that you need to wake up at 5 a.m. and have some elaborate morning routine. That works for some people. It works really well for me, but it's not for everyone. So think about what you need to do as a bare minimum to make sure that when you open your laptop and you're ready to start working, that you are aware, that you are awake, you are present, and you are able to do your job well from the jump. Now, at a bare minimum, that's probably going to be hygiene, breakfast, some sort of morning beverage of choice, tea for me, coffee for many. Make sure you're getting that in as a minimum. That might only take you 30 minutes, but it's definitely not gonna take you just five. Morning routines get a lot of love and they deserve it. They can really supercharge your day. But evening routines are an underrated power move. And when you incorporate a solid evening routine into your day, it can make your mornings and the rest of your day go much more smoothly. So what do I mean when I talk about having a solid evening routine? Now, it could be elaborate, like the kinds of things that us 5 a.m. wake up people do, but it also could be just as simple as taking five to 10 minutes to think about the day ahead and pull out any things that you need to be successful. Setting out an outfit, getting your notes together, looking at your meeting schedule, and making sure that you have everything you need. Spending just a few minutes doing that at the end of the day before you go to sleep can make your day go so much smoother. Tip number six, guard your work-life balance. Two big traps that remote workers often fall into is allowing work to permeate your personal life to the point where there never really feels like there's a separation. And the second one is being so fearful of not being visible or being perceived as slacking off that you don't take breaks, lunches, and vacations and you don't respect your working hours. It's really important to not fall into those traps. Take breaks, take lunches, take vacations. Respect your work hours. When you're on, you're on. When you're off, you're off. Now, there are some jobs that require a bit more flexibility. You might be at a level professionally where being on call is just part of your job. There's nothing wrong with that, but that doesn't mean that you need to be on and responsive 100% of the time, the same way that you would be during standard working hours. Make sure to protect your work-life balance. Tip number seven, find alternative workspaces outside of your home. When I tell people that I work from home full time, maybe about half the time I get this reaction. I could never work from home. Being stuck at home all day, every day, I'd go crazy. But here's the thing, just because you can work from home doesn't mean you have to work from home all of the time. If your setup is mobile, you can move your setup. Now I have three or four places in my general vicinity where I like to work outside of the home and I go to them multiple times a week. Now, most of the time I do work from home because that's my preference, but I always make sure to get out of the house and work somewhere else two or three times a week. And I recommend that you do the same. Tip number eight, be intentionally visible. Now you're not gonna hear me say very much about the advantages of working in an office because frankly, I don't think there are very many, but one undeniable advantage of working in an office are the multitudes of spontaneous opportunities to connect with your coworkers and build relationships. Meeting at the water cooler, going out for coffee together, grabbing lunch together, chatting about your weekend while you're setting up the presentation on the projector. Those are opportunities that remote workers simply don't get. And so it's important important to find ways to build relationships with your coworkers absent the sorts of opportunities that you would have if you were working in an office. And that means being a little contrived sometimes. Sometimes you have to just grab a coworker on chat or on email and say, hey, can we just have a 15 minute call? I'd love to catch up with you. And just talk about the same things that you would if you were at the water cooler or grabbing coffee together. Those opportunities build your relationships with the people that you work with and make you memorable, visible, and valuable. Tip number nine, get in regular activity and learn how to cook. Now again, you're not gonna hear me extolling the virtues of office work very often, but this is one advantage that I have to admit. They have built in activity. If you're getting out of your house every day and walking around an office every day, you are getting in more activity than someone who's working from home. 
So if you're working remotely, you wanna make sure that you are intentionally incorporating activity into your daily life. Now, I'm not saying to go hit the gym for an hour every day. If that's your thing, awesome. I go to the gym regularly and it has a huge impact on my life, but doing something as simple as making sure that you're getting up regularly and stretching or that you're going out a couple of times to walk around the block is a great way to intentionally incorporate activity into your daily life as a remote worker. If you ask me, everyone should know how to cook a few really good meals, but this is a particularly important skill for remote workers to have. Where there are offices, there are restaurants and cafes. So as long as you can afford to do it, it's pretty easy to step out and find a delicious meal. But if you're working from home, you may not have as many options as you would if you were working in an office. So it's a really good idea to invest in your cooking skills. If you can put together some tasty meals, maybe even some healthy tasty meals, working from home is gonna feel a lot more pleasant than if you are eating a lot of processed food or takeout. And finally, tip number 10 make a plan for all that time and money you're saving. Now, most office workers know that they are sinking time and money into the fact that they work in an office, but very few of them know exactly how much. As a remote worker, it is in your best interest to know exactly how much time and money you're saving by not going into an office every day and making a point of putting those resources towards your goals and priorities. Now, I made an entire video about how to make the most out of your time and money savings as a remote worker. I will link that video in the description below and at the end of this video. I'll be making many more videos on the remote work experience, so make sure to subscribe each one of these tips deserves its own deep dive and I'm looking forward to making them in my remote work series. I will link to that playlist at the end of this video and in the description below. Do you have a comfortable, dedicated workspace that you can use as a home base? What would your dream workspace look like? Tell me in the comments. If you wanna build a life you love, hit the subscribe button or join my newsletter in the link in the description below. I'm Phoebe, this is Better With Phoebe. I hope you have a great day and an even better tomorrow. Thanks for spending some time with me today and I'll see you next week.